So I wanted to spend a little time with you taking you on a small journey, a small, very, very important journey that answers the question, well, yeah, I'm creative, but at my company, they're rolling their eyeballs. Do you know that in the US, 80% of divorces can be connected to rolling eyeballs? OK, if this is the case, how many ideas have died because of rolling eyeballs? At my consultancy, Bright House, it's a global consultancy, we have an eyeball rolling rule. Somebody rolls their eyeballs, zero tolerance, fired. It's an ideas company. You can't roll your eyeballs. And yet, we are taught to be circumspect, to be suspicious, to be skeptical and cynical, rather than nurturing, rather than nurturing. You know, I often have said that if you're, if you're not nurturing your, your, your fellow associates, that you are abusing them. The omission of nurturing is abuse in the ideas world, because an idea can be snapped away, killed, just by a wince, just by a, mm, I don't know, maybe next quarter, next quarter. Ideas don't like next quarters. Ideas love next quarter centuries. That's where the big ideas are. So come up with you will back to where I found my, my idea of purpose and passion. And how, in a very bizarre kind of way over the last 25 years, I was able to connect performance, rather passion, and, pur and purpose with performance, which I really think is, the, is going to be the, the big equation uh, in, in the years ahead. If we can find our own purpose, our reason for being, our raison d'etre, our why, our why, as Nietzsche would put it, if you have a why, you, you can deal with any what. If you could find a why in your life and it connects with your brand or your company, you're in the right place. And if you're not, you should quit your job tomorrow. And if you're in the right, right why, you probably, if you're with the right, right people, have the amount of passion to sustain. Passion makes perfect. And performance comes right after purpose and passion.